Hello learners, welcome to this course on practical machine learning using Google Colab. So in this tutorial, we will continue with our discussion on fundamentals of computer vision part 8. In this video, I will be discussing about a very important concept called as gradients. Gradient are used for detecting edges in an image, which allows us to find contours and outlines of an object in an image. So we make use of this gradient to identify the outline of an object. So this type of finding the edges in an image will help in different methods like histogram of oriented gradient, scale invariant feature transform where we use this gradient as an initial step. Then this methods build upon it. So it is also used to construct the saliency map which can highlight the subject in an image. So edge detection. What is edge detection? So edge detection is a process of finding edges in an image or it is a process of finding the outline of an object which reveals structural information regarding the objects in an image. So the edges mainly correspond to the boundaries of an object in an image or there can be some shadowing or lighting variation. So due to which I can have some boundaries that can be identified as an edge or I can have some parts within an object that can also be considered as an edge. How to find the edges in an image? So the first step is we need to compute the gradient of an image. So from the name itself we can understand gradient means variation. So here what we do we see the variation of pixel intensity in different direction. Along x direction how the pixel intensity varies. Along y direction how the pixel intensity varies. So that is how we compute this gradient. So an image gradient is formally defined as a directional change in image intensity. So at each pixel of an input, a gradient measures the change in pixel intensity in a given direction. For each and every pixel in an image, what we do, we try to see along x direction, what is the change in intensity, along y direction, what is the change in intensity. So that is what we try to do in computing the gradients. We can also find the direction in which the change in intensity. So one parameter is how much variation is there in the pixel intensity. So what is the strength of variation? Another one is we can find the orientation, the direction of variation. So that can be also be computed using this gradient computation. So let us take an example. We will take a 3 by 3 neighborhood as I have shown here. I have a center pixel. So the red pixel is a center pixel and we are going to consider the 3 by 3 neighborhood. So I am going to take for simplicity 4 neighborhood function. So where I have north pixel, south pixel, west pixel and east pixel. So usually the pixels will run from left to right and top to bottom. So let us take this input image as I and define north, south, east and west pixels. So if I take the coordinate of the center pixel to be x, y, the north pixel is given by i of x, y minus 1. Because we have taken the center pixel as x, y, so the x coordinate is not going to change, whereas the y coordinate it is decremented by 1 to get the north pixel. Same way for south pixel, the x coordinate will remain same, whereas the y coordinate will be incremented by 1. So that is why we get south pixel i of x, y plus 1. Same way when I want to write an equation for east pixel, so now the y coordinate is going to remain same, only the x coordinate is going to change for west and east pixel. So for east it will be incremented by 1, for west it will be decremented by 1. So that is how we get this i of x plus 1, y and i of x minus 1 comma y for your best pixel. So once I computed 
this north, south, east and west pixel, I can find the change in intensity variation along x direction and y direction. So the change in intensity along y direction is given by gy which is gradient along y direction which is nothing but your north pixel minus south pixel. So the i of x comma y minus 1 is a north pixel minus south pixel i of x comma y plus 1. Same way we can compute the gradient along x direction by taking the east pixel minus west pixel. So east pixel is i of x plus 1 comma y minus i of x minus 1 comma y. So after computing this gx and gy, so gx is nothing but the gradient along x direction, gy is gradient along y direction. So we can find the strength of variation for a particular pixel. So for that we can compute the gradient magnitude g equal to root of gx square plus gy square. So this gives the strength of variation for a particular pixel, strength of variation in intensity for a particular pixel. Same way we can also compute the orientation part. The direction of intensity variation is given by this gradient orientation. So this is found by using theta equal to r tan 2 of gy comma gx. So this value will be in terms of radians. So in order to convert it into degrees, we multiply it by 180 by pi. So this is something like a tan inverse of b by a. So we compute the theta value. So we find the strength of variation in pixel intensity and also we find the direction in which the intensity changes. So let us take an example and let us work out. So let us take a region in an image where I have a center pixel. On the lower left and bottom we have white pixel. On the right side of your top right side of your neighborhood we have zero black pixels. So now let us try to compute the gradient along x direction, gradient along y direction then use these values to find the total gradient magnitude and also we try to find the gradient orientation. So to find gx we need to take east pixel minus west pixel. So east pixel is zero west pixel is 255. So 0 minus 255, it will be minus 255. So and if I want to take gy, again it will be north minus south, which is 0 minus 255, again it will be minus 255. Then I can use this value to compute the total gradient magnitude. So root of 255 square plus 255 square equal to 360.62 is the value. And I can use the same values for computing your theta. Theta equal to r tan 2 of minus 255 comma minus 255. And this value is multiplied by 180 by pi. So I get minus 135 degree. So minus 135 degree is nothing but the angle shown on this figure. So in this direction, the intensity is varying. So that it is clearly visible from the image also. So from top right towards bottom left, the intensity is changing. So that is how we can compute a gradient in an image. So here for simplicity we have taken only two pixel values 0 and 255. But in a real time case we will have a grayscale image. So grayscale image in the sense the pixel intensity can be varied from 0 to 255. It can be any value from 0 to 255. So there we will be making use of this 0 to 255 to compute your orientation and magnitude of gradient. So this is by doing mathematically we found what is the strength of variation at a particular point and in which direction it changes. We can also use kernels to do this operation. So we have Sobel and Scar kernel. So these kernels can be used to find the gradients along x direction and y direction. So we can apply this kernel on top of your image and do the convolution process. So by doing the convolution process from top left to right and from top to bottom we get the gradient of an image along x direction and y direction. 
so for we have for both sobel and scar kernel we have two kernel values so gx for sobel kernel is given by minus 1 0 1 minus 2 0 2 minus 1 0 1 for gy it is minus 1 minus 2 minus 1 0 0 0 1 2 1 Same way for SCAR kernel, it will be GX is computed using three zero minus three, ten zero minus ten, three zero minus three. GY is computed by three ten three zero 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 minus three minus ten and minus three. So by applying this kernel on an image and performing the convolution operation from left to right and from top to bottom. we get the image in terms of gradient of x and gradient of y so that is what we will be doing in this program to find how the intensity variation is there along x direction how the intensity varies along y direction let us go into the programming part so let us open the google colab in google colab if you want to connect to cloud based gpu or tpus you can go to this edit section go to net notebook settings here you have a option of selecting a cloud based gpu or tpu or you can use a cpu alone so after selecting this you can get connected to the cloud environment by pressing this connect button it will get initialized and it will get connected to the cloud environment it is getting initialized and it is connected to the cloud environment so in this program we will be doing a program on computing the gradients from an image so let us start the program by importing the necessary packages so as usual we do for all our programs we import certain set of packages by default so from google colab patches i am going to import cb2_imshow which is used for displaying the image then i am going to use a matplotlib.py plot to plot certain graphs whether we are using this functions or not i am going to add this set of statements in all the programs by default then we have argument parse library which is used for providing the input during run time then i have cv2 which is a computer vision version 2 where it has all the image processing functions then i have new numpy which is numerical python library which is mainly used for your matrix and array computations so in short form i will be making use of it as nt so let us run this so now let us try to import an image into our google colab environment for that i use google.colab import files so let me run this so it will ask for the location of a file so let me select the file so i am going to select a file apj.jpg it gets uploaded to the cloud environment now now i want to visualize it how the file, how the image looks like so for that i am going to make use of this cb2.imread function so when i read that the image will get stored in the image variable then i am going to convert this image into a grayscale image by giving this flag cb2.color_bgr22 gray so it will convert your color image to a grayscale image then i am going to plot and see how the color image looks like how the grayscale image is going to look like so when i run this you can see this is the original image and this is the grayscale converted image so now let us first define the sobel kernel and we try to use that sobel kernel on our image to compute gradient of x and gradient of y 
So how to define this Sobel curve? So we have a function in our OpenCV which is cv2.sobel. Same way for SCAR, we have cv2.scar. So we give our gray scale converted image to this Sobel function and I say that my gradient value can be a floating point number, 64 bit floating point number and I need to compute along the x direction. For that I give dx equal to 1 and dy is 0. So dx is along x direction, dy is along y direction. So we are going to compute only along x direction. So that value it comes as a gx which is gradient of x. Same way we give the same grayscale image to the cv2.sobel function and I say I am going to compute the gradient along y direction. So that is why dx is equal to 0, dy is equal to 1. So thereby I get this gy. So we have computed this gx and gy and I can use it for computing the gradient magnitude. So gradient magnitude is nothing but root of gx square plus gy square. So in order to do root, I take a numpy function np dot square root gx square. So square is given by this two asterisks gx asterisk asterisk two means gx square plus gy square. So I do root of gx square plus gy square that gives the magnitude value. Same way we can compute the orientation. Once I compute gx and gy using this value, I can compute the orientation. So for orientation again I am apply numpy function arctan2 of gy comma gx and this value will be in radians to convert it into degrees I multiply it with 180 by pi. So again pi function is defined in your numpy so I am going to make use of that np dot pi. Then I am going to print and see how the magnitude looks like and how the orientation looks like for an image. So this gx and gy and g will be computed for each and every pixels. For each and every pixel you will get gx, gy and using this gx and gy you compute g and theta. So for each and every pixel you will get this g and theta values. So that is what it is this study. First the gradient magnitude values then the gradient orientation values. Next what we are going to do is since this number which we get for gx and gy is a floating point number I am going to convert it into a absolute value. So for that we use cv2 dot convert scale absolute value of gx and gy. So we find the absolute value then I am going to add these two values together to form g. To represent it as an image, it will be better to convert this gx and gy and put some weightage for this gx and gy and combine it to form an image. So that will give a better interpretation of an image. So for that what we do, first we do the absolute value conversion of gx and gy. Then I am going to give weightage for each and every gx and gy. So how much weightage I am going to give? cv2 dot added weighted gx I am going to give 50 percentage weightage, gy also I am going to give 50 percentage weightage. So which means in my final image the gradient along x direction will be given with 50 percentage weightage and gradient along y direction will be given with 50 percentage weightage. And we try to see the combined image how it looks like. So let us plot and see. First I plot the grayscale image then I plot only the gradient along x direction, gx. Then I plot only along y direction, gradient along y direction. Then I am going to plot the combined variation of gx and gy. So let us plot this and try to understand how this works. So now let us see this is our input image, grayscale image. First we have put the gradient along x direction. So see, so gradient along x direction, x is nothing but this is the x direction. Y direction is top to bottom. 
so left to right is your x direction top to bottom is your y direction so now in gx we are trying to see the pixel variation along x direction pixel variation along x direction if i see from here if i go there is not much variation right so when i go here there is not much variation here i find some variation changes it goes little bit darker so there is a variation here again it goes brighter and again it goes to dark so here if you see it's almost black there is not much variation here you can see there is some variation there is a change in my pixel intensity along x direction and again it goes back to black color so when i go here in between again there is not much variation in the pixel intensity when the hair comes there is a change in the pixel intensity so that is represented here and then when i go here on the forehead there is not much variation again when the hair comes there is a variation so that is how we get this image so we try to see the pixel intensity variation along x direction so when i go on this interface of the flag okay where there is a white and orange regions are there there is a interface when i see that when i go along that axis i could not find any variation so you are not able to find any intersection point in the flag in the x direction whereas if i see it on the y axis we will see a intensity variation along y axis let us try to see that along y axis so here you see again this is our original image now i am going to move from top to bottom so as i go from top to bottom there is not much intensity variation suddenly at this interface i have a change in intensity variation so it will be given as a line here you can find there is a line so there is not much variation but there is suddenly a variation here and then again there is not much variation in the white portion and again there is a change in my intensity variation so you can find the line again here so like this we try to scan from top to bottom thereby we get the intensity variation along y direction now what we are going to do we are going to combine both the things to get the overall gradient variation so i am going to use the x variation y variation combine both the things together it is just like adding these two images together with some weightage so we give some 50 percentage weightage when i do that you can see this is the overall intensity variation here you can see both along x axis and along y axis you can find the variations so here along x axis the r is more clearly seen whereas in the y variation we are not able to have a clear difference so when i see the combined one i can see both the line as well as the r part is highlighted so that is how we can compute this gradient along x direction and y direction and use this gx and gy to compute the gradient magnitude and gradient orientation so in this tutorial i have discussed about on how to use this gradient to find the outline of an object so the process is very simple for each and every pixel we compute gx and gy then use this gx and gy to compute gradient magnitude and gradient orientation so thanks for watching please subscribe for more technical learning thank you